Even though I'm defending much of the um, Greek Christian synthesis, also on this score, there's every reason to be cautious, and there is every reason not to simply adopt whatever we find around ourselves, also not in the Platonic tradition. We need to be careful, certainly with regard to the language of sacramentality, applying it either to Julius Johnson, who we've been discussing, or to um, any of the uh, pagan philosophers that we've been talking about. At best, you could say that the Platonic tradition knows of a sacramental beauty in a remoteless, analogous sense, just as I said of Julius Johnson, that yes, his attack on this, this flattened, imminent kind of music um, is a plea for sacramentality coming from a non-Christian uh, musical theorist. The notion of participation, though, is key in the Platonic tradition. And it's the notion of participation that facilitates the Christian sacramental understanding of music. The differences are this, are these, I think. It's only in the Christian tradition, it is only in the Christian tradition, that the harmony of the universe, of the cosmos, which the church fathers talk about so much, basing themselves on the Platonic tradition in some sense, but it's only in the Christian tradition that this harmony of the cosmos is predicated on Christ as the composer. Right? Think Clement of Alexandria. It's only in Christ. Because only, only in, the, in the Christian tradition. Because only there is Christ the creator of all. Think Irenaeus, right? Christ being both redeemer and creator. That's the case only in the Christian tradition. Secondly, it's only in the Christian tradition that harmonizing of the soul means renewal of the image of God. We haven't talked much, but we haven't talked at all actually in this section, session about the image of God. Um, can't do everything. But several of the, of the theologians that we've been talking about, talk about, when they talk about healing, healing of the emotions and so on, they're talking about the image of God and being restored. So music does that, and only the Christian tradition can talk about that. Thirdly, and we're also going to talk about this, but one of the musical aims for Gregory of Nyssa, one of the purposes of music, and he talks about especially when he exposes Psalm 150 and the clashing symbols. The clashing symbols are angels and human beings. And they are reunited. <laughs> they're reunited in the eschaton. So, um, you can only do that when you're Christian, right? Um, and finally, I think, and that's the, most, the deepest and most important element here. Christ himself is the one who encounters us in the climactic reality that is present in the very words of the Psalter, as we saw, right? The Vox Christi and the various ways in which this functions. So to wrap this up, music making, music making, Bible reading, interpretation, right? Bible reading, moral living, these three are of a piece to the church fathers. They go hand in hand. They all have to do with discovery of divine harmony. Because it's through each of these, music making, Bible reading, psalms, moral living, through each of these we enter into Christ, which is why they're sacramental. And through each of these, we join the harmony of the cosmos. All of that, I think, is unique to the Christian faith. And metaphysic is never a metaphysic simply glued on to some Christian convictions. Rather, a metaphysic must always be a theologically informed metaphysic. And so with faith in Christ, the Church Fathers, in some sense, truly unlocked, I think, the key to genuine harmony. Early Christians sang their psalms, and when they sang their psalms, they enjoyed the beauty of Christ. They read their psalms, they meditated on their psalms, and in doing so, they learned the truth of Christ. Also, 
virtue, they also lived the Psalms. And when they lived the Psalms, well, they participated in the goodness, in the virtue of Christ. And so, think of Calvin's statement, new song, an old world, for an old world, is by combining these things, right? Singing, meditating, and living the songs that we join the perfect harmony of Christ himself.